Are you a fan of classic movies? There's one from 1973 that's a real gem. It's filled with humor, surprises, and some emotional moments that really stick with you. It's about a guy and a young girl during the Great Depression. They go on a journey together, and you're never quite sure if they're related or not. The cool thing about this movie is how it captures the essence of family, friendship, and finding your way in tough times. And the actors. Well, they have this amazing chemistry that lights up the screen. But what's even cooler are all the stories from behind the scenes. Seriously, there's so much interesting stuff to learn about how they made this movie happen. So, if you're up for a heartwarming and entertaining flick, this one's for you. And hey, if you've got any special memories or experiences tied to this movie, we'd love to hear about them. Grab some snacks, get comfy, and get ready for a movie night you won't forget. And stay tuned, because there's more fun to come. Back in the early 1970s, there was a movie that really caught people's attention. It had everything comedy, drama, and some truly memorable performances. One of the most talked about aspects of this movie was the incredible chemistry between the lead actors. In fact, one of them even won an Academy Award for their role. The movie's success didn't stop at the box office. It inspired a whole bunch of spin-offs, including a short-lived TV series. People couldn't get enough of the characters and their adventures. You could find posters and soundtracks from the movie flying off the shelves everywhere you looked. And it didn't stop there, the movie also got people interested in the time period it was set in, with some viewers diving into the history of the Great Depression. Even all these years later, the movie still has a special place in people's hearts. Its portrayal of a father-daughter duo on a quirky road trip continues to captivate audiences around the world. The influence of the movie on other filmmakers is clear, and its charm hasn't faded one bit. In 1973, a film starring Tatum O'Neill captivated audiences with its gripping narrative and memorable performances. Tatum O'Neill's memoir, A Paper Life, made waves upon its release in 24, debuting at four on the New York Times bestseller list. The film's attention to detail is evident in a scene where Addie insists on her $200 juxtaposed with a theater marquee displaying Steamboat Round the Bend from 1935, suggesting a setting in that era. However, another scene shows Addie filling in a hotel register with dates from 1936, indicating the film's timeline likely extended beyond its initial release. This attention to historical accuracy adds depth to the film's portrayal of its characters and setting, creating an immersive experience for viewers. Tatum O'Neill's autobiography sheds light on her experiences both on and off the screen, offering insight into the making of this timeless classic. In 1974, Linda Blair, at just 12 years old, received a Best Supporting Actress nomination for her role in The Exorcist. Interestingly, she was up against another child actor, Tatum O'Neill, who at the age of 10 became the youngest Oscar winner ever for her role in a 1973 film. Robert Evans, a producer, suggested Warren Beatty or Jack Nicholson for the lead role. Tatum O'Neill won the Best Supporting Actress Oscar for her performance in a 1973 film, making her the 74th actress to receive the award. She clinched the win at the 46th Annual Academy Awards in 1974. In the movie, Moses' nickname is Long Boy in the book, but simply Mos on screen. Moses' character shows his shrewdness from the start as he steals flowers from another grave at Addie's mother's burial service. Tatum O'Neill, at 10 years old, became the youngest person to win an Oscar in a competitive category, Best Supporting Actress, for her role in the film. She triumphed over her rival nominee, Linda Blair, in The Exorcist, who is four years older. Tatum O'Neill's record remains unbroken as of 2023, solidifying her place in cinematic history. Initially planned as Addie Prey, the film was intended to feature Paul Newman and his daughter Nell Potts under the direction of John Huston. It was envisioned as a color movie. In the book, Addie expresses uncertainty about Moses being her father, but in the movie, she firmly believes he is. Tatum O'Neill, despite having no acting experience, was selected for the role of Addie following a suggestion by Polly Platt. Peter Bogdanovich, having recently worked with Tatum's father Ryan O'Neill, decided to cast them as the leads. In response to the TV series based on Paper Moon, it aired in 1974 but did not find success, despite featuring Jodie Foster. The actress portraying Imogen P.J. Johnson, a 15-year-old schoolgirl from Houston TX, impressed the director during auditions by complimenting him. The desolate location of Uncle Daniel, and Aunt Billy's house reflects St. Joseph's historical role as a gateway from the civilized east to the Wild West alongside nearby independence. It signifies a departure point into untamed territories. The movie, directed by Peter Bogdanovich, was released in 1973. 
The song Birthday Boy by the Drive by Truckers features a line inspired by a quote from Madeline Kahn's character in the film. Renowned film critic Roger Ebert awarded the movie four stars, highlighting that it revolves around two con artists, focusing not solely on their cons, but rather on the relationship they share, which is depicted as both funny and poignant. Bogdanovich, known for his affinity for the past, shot the film in black and white, marking his second venture into this style after the last picture show. He expressed his fondness for the era, which he finds easier to connect with creatively. In finalizing the cast for the 1973 film, the director, Peter Bogdanovich, met with Ryan O'Neill and Tatum O'Neill at their Malibu home. During a beach run invitation from Ryan Tatum's refusal, citing Bogdanovich's reluctance to go barefoot, led to her inclusion in the film. Tatum O'Neill, a key figure in Paper Moon, published her memoirs titled A Paper Life in 24. The book delves into her troubled childhood, contentious relationships with her father, and Farrah Fawcett, intimate encounters with Melanie Griffith, Jean-Claude Van Damme, and Prince Albert of Monaco, as well as her tumultuous marriage to John McEnroe and the subsequent custody battle over their three children. Set against the backdrop of 1952, when there was only one round into Missouri, the film's plot is shaped by the geographical constraints of the time. Despite being pursued by the police, the characters had to turn south to the bridge as the Missouri River had not yet changed course. In present times, the pursuit could have continued north into Missouri without the need to cross the river, highlighting the impact of changing landscapes over the years. In the film, a scene at the carnival captures the nostalgic essence as Madeline Kahn's voice fills the air with the classic tune paper moon emanating from an old gramophone in the photo booth. The brief moment adds a touch of authenticity to the setting. Before her audition, P.J. Johnson boldly approached director Peter Bogdanovich, exclaiming, ooh a wee, you good looking. Impressed by her confidence, Bogdanovich promptly offered her the role of Imogen. The movie holds a place in the official top 250 narrative feature films on Letterboxd, reflecting its enduring popularity and significance among audiences. In 1973, the movie Paper Moon showcased the complex dynamics within the O'Neill family. Tatum O'Neill, a child actor in the film, disapproved of her father Ryan O'Neill's relationship with Farrah Fawcett. Surprisingly, in her 2004 memoir, A Paper Life, she spoke fondly of Fawcett, describing her as kind and gentle, especially in moments when Tatum needed care. Set against the backdrop of the Great Depression, the film portrays Moe's questionable cash register swindles, each yielding a modest two or three dollars. In the economic context of that era, these meager amounts held a purchasing power equivalent to $40, $60 today. While Ryan O'Neill had a lengthy acting career, Paper Moon, released in 1973, marked the eighth film of his career and the last to receive critical acclaim as a starring role. Despite decades in the industry, this film remains the pinnacle of his success, showcasing the essence of his craft. Navigating through family dynamics, economic struggles, and a critical milestone in Ryan O'Neill's career, Paper Moon remains a unique chapter in cinema history, unraveling layers of complexity within its narrative.